Hey guys, this is a review for the DNA RNA protein test. Um, and I split it into four main topics. Now yesterday on our review, we reviewed everything in our journal from our first notes um, to what we did uh, latest. The test is gonna be approximately 25 to 30 multiple choice questions. And the first thing that we're gonna go over is um, when they ask you to identify a complementary sequence, okay? The word complementary means it goes with it. If I say things like colors are complementary or oh, y'all are complementary to each other, okay? What goes together? Now, you have to be very specific what you're talking about. So for example, here's the DNA sequence. C-T-T-G-C-A. Now, the first thing I could ask you is, what DNA pairs to it? Or what DNA pairs complementary to it? So if you have DNA and I ask for DNA, you just give me the, the opposite. You know what pairs to it? So it's GAA, C, G, T. Perfect, okay? Now, second question I could ask you, what RNA pairs complementary to it. And instead of using the DNA nucleotides, you use the RNA. So remember, instead of T's, it's U. So you C to the G, T is still to the A, T to the A, G to the C, C to the G, A to the U. G, A, A, C, G, U. Okay. Now that was the easy way to ask it. The harder way to ask it would be what will be transcribed? And you're like, what does transcribed mean? Okay, so transcription, translation, remember transcription is first, translation is second. So transcription is DNA to RNA. So what will be transcribed? That's the same as asking you, what will be the RNA? If you do not know that, you gotta study it. So all they're asking is, what RNA do you get from that? So C to the G, T to the A, T to the A, G with a C, C with a G, A to the U. Okay. Now the hardest thing they could ask you is what will be translated? And if they give you DNA, you need to go all the way to translated, which is RNA to protein. You need to go from DNA to RNA to amino acid. So they could give you DNA and they will give you DNA on the test and they're gonna ask you, well, what kind of protein is it gonna make? Okay. Remember, DNA cannot go into the amino acid chart. So first thing you can do is you get your DNA, and that's the DNA I originally gave you, okay? What will be translated? So we turn our DNA into RNA. So C with G, T to the A, T to the A, G to the C, C to the G, A to the U, okay? Then I break it into codons, okay? And I put the G, A, A into the codon chart. And if I do that, G to the A to the A glutamate. Okay, and then the second one is C G U. C to the G to the U. R G. R G. Okay? So when they ask you to translate something, you're going from DNA to RNA to amino acid. Okay? DNA with the A T G C, RNA A U G C, amino acid. Uh, put in the chart, um, and you have to list amino acids. Okay, second part, um, a bunch of questions in our um, quizzes always ask like, how does DNA make your traits? Okay, we've gone over this over and over and over. When they ask you about DNA, they want you to talk about proteins because your traits is what you look like, and what you look like is based on how proteins build you, how they build your height, your eye color, your bone structure. So if, um, if you have a multiple choice question that tries to relate DNA to how you look, your traits, your phenotype, you wanna pick something that says, well, DNA codes for proteins and proteins determine your traits, okay? And then another thing that's been coming up is make sure you know the difference between chromosomes versus just a DNA sequence. This goes all the way back to chromatin versus chromosomes. Now, starting over here with the DNA, 
DNA, you can read it, okay? It's meant to be read. You can pick out mutations. You can transcribe it into RNA. Then you can translate it, okay? It's loose. You can see it, okay? When it's tightly packed into chromosomes, you can't read it. You don't know if there's mutations. You don't know what amino acid it codes for. All you know are those, those things on the chromosomes here are genes. Chromosomes are packed with genes. So you can look at the location of genes. You can compare chromosomes. You can compare genes on chromosomes. So remember, there's a time and a place for chromosomes and a time and a place for DNA. Okay, last thing are the mutations, okay? You need to watch the Amoeba Sister video. It's only half of it. Um, Amoeba Sister video talks about DNA mutations versus chromosomal mutations. You only have to do the DNA mutations. Okay, now, first thing I wanna talk about is mutations mean that there's a change. And a change, you know, it could be good or it could be bad. Now it's most often bad, that's why I have a star there. But why can a change be good? If the, if the change, the mutation, makes the organism stronger, such as in evolution. So for example, if uh, there was a hawk and a mutation caused its beak to be extra hooked, uh, where it could, you know, eat and tear into flesh better, that is a good mutation and that will be passed on. And so that's how a good mutation um, that makes the organism stronger gets passed on. Now, bad mutations, now, if there's a mutation in DNA and then it gets transcribed in RNA and it gets translated in amino acid, um, the changes in the DNA are gonna be passed all the way to the amino acid and you're gonna get a wrong amino acid. And then remember the amino acids have to fold into protein. Well, guess what? They won't fold, the protein won't work. So if you have wrong amino acids here, they're not gonna fold into something like this. They're gonna look kind of all kinked and jagged and so most of the time mutations are bad. Now, uh, I'm gonna go over mutations a little bit quicker now, and then I'm gonna put another video on mutations. But basically, if you have this initial RNA sequence, you go into the amino acid chart and you get its amino acids, okay? So AUG codes for MET, which is always start, the finding. CAA is proline, UAG is stop, okay? If I would create a mutation that substitutes the G for the A, that's called a substitution mutation where you just change or substitute a base. So now, MET still codes for MET. Wow, proline still codes for proline, and then stop is still stop. This was a substitution mutation that actually coded for the same amino acid, so nothing happened to the overall protein. So that's a substitution mutation, which is a silent mutation. Now. If the substitution mutation here, where the CCA turned into UCA, the proline turned into SIR. So instead of MET pro stop, it's MET SIR stop. This is a substitution mutation that changes one amino acid. It changes the amino acid and it probably changes the protein. Now, for mutations, this is an insertion, but for insertions and deletions, insertions insert a base and everything gets bumped over. Mutation, uh, deletions delete one and everything moves over this way. These affect the whole chain. So ready? As you insert the A, this C, um, as you insert the A, this A moves over. So instead of met pro stop, it's met three iso and then a leftover G. So whenever you insert and everything gets pushed over or delete and everything gets pushed over, you change many amino acids and if you would insert a stop, that's, an all, that's also a way to change an amino acid and everything after it. Because if this was a stop, nothing behind it would get translated either. So uh, the best mutations are, are to have silent mutations where nothing happens. Substitution mutations where only one base is changed aren't bad, but insertions and deletions are the worst, okay?